I looked into the Thieves Guild in Baldur's Gate, and it has a very original name. It's called the Guild, <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually um, pretty extensive. And the there's different um, kind of branches of it that operate in different parts of the city, and so where you guys are at, the it's called the uh, oh, where was it? Shars Serpents. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, getting affiliated with these guys is actually pretty involved and would probably, it would t definitely take you more than a week to like prove yourself to them. And, and uh, you have to like work through the ranks. So you start out as like a foot pad. Um, so I don't know that you could really accomplish a whole lot with them in, in just a few days. Um, but you do learn that you don't want to do any, um, how would you say, unauthorized thieving. Yeah. <laughs> or they will come after you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm getting a message. Oh, my, my wife is telling me I'm not on Twitch. Yeah, you're oh, not on my... The guild's name is the guild. I love that show. Huh. <laughs> my wife is my sound engineer. Yay. <laughs> and Not... I'd like to get the, the, the $72 thing, but I can't swing $72 right now. Which one's the 72? Uh, the one where you get the, the PDFs of all of them and then the PDFs of everything and locked in the stretch goals. That'd be nice. Yeah, there's something like 17 adventures now. What did you... Granted, they're only like three or four pages long, but Monty Cook is writing one. Oh, we lost Trevor again. So yeah. when Trevor gets back, we'll start because Steve's going to be late. So okay. I said not to wait for him. Um, did, did anyone have anything important or specific that they wanted to do during the time that you're just kind of waiting for the cultists to show up in Baldur's Gate? Uh, again, I just want to point out that I bought everyone a net. Okay. And everyone? Every yes. I might be offending Tyvel with that. Okay. <laughs> hey, Why? Thing. Which one did you swing, Dwayne? What? Oh, for I, I went for the $102 one. Yeah, and I was like... If, if you bought Nivara a net... You would probably be like, I don't know how you expect me to carry that. I have a hard enough time carrying everything I currently <laughs> carry. <laughs> the net can actually be used to hold other items. You can tie it to your backpack. <laughs> and stuff can be inside the net. But I, you might need to have like proficiency in martial items to use it anyway. I didn't think that through. Probably. But, uh, I did buy sure. one. I think, I think how much does the net weigh? I would guess next to nothing. I, oh. I guess I didn't check that either. For some reason I was thinking they're like 10 pounds, but I'd probably... Oh, probably... it says three pounds. Three pounds. Yeah. Did you guys sell they your horses weapon too. in wagon? Oh, yeah, yes. you don't have a wagon anymore. Yeah, we sold the... Oh, yeah, the wagon, yeah. Yeah, we sold the horses. The, the firewood that used to be a wagon? <laughs> okay. I don't even think we picked that up off the ground. Probably not. We but... left it there. Now, if, if you don't have proficiency with the net, you can still attempt to use it. You'll just have disadvantage. Yeah. So there it's it up is. to you whether you actually hours to go. I'm I'm getting to the point where yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like on my weight because well, I'm not very strong. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's there's still some room in the haversack. So if there's anything you want to put in there, actually. I am that side of the weight. I am, I'm actually, technically speaking, encumbered. Because my thing is so low because I'm not a strength at all. Well, what I'm you can do is it really only matters in, like, combat. So if you get in a fight, if you actually have everything on you, you can just, like, drop your backpack, which is going to be yeah. the majority of the weight, probably. Other than your yeah, huge coin purse, maybe. <laughs> Well, no, because Nivara doesn't have that many coins because she kept a lot of the um. Oh, the gems, right? The statuettes and the gems and stuff. 
All right. So if you guys remember, kind of the plan here is you're going to get into this uh, caravan. Um, presumably the cultists are coming here on their way to wherever they're going. And um, once you see them, you're going to try to get on the caravan. There's going to be a lot of merchants uh, that are unaffiliated, just traveling together. So after about a week of waiting, you start to see some people that you recognize. Uh, you see, let's see. You just see some random uh, like mercenaries, not even necessarily cultists, but that you remember seeing when you were in the camp. Uh, you recognize some faces. Um, maybe even a couple of the cultists you see that you recognize. And yeah, so so you see this. Uh, they, they're kind of coming in in separate groups. They're not all coming in together. They're obviously pretending that they're, they're not all, you know, that they don't all know each other and, and they're kind of operating independently. Um, you know, you kind of keep an eye on them and, and you see some of the mercenaries hiring on with some of the merchants that are, that are getting ready to go out in the next caravan. Um, so this, this looks like this is it. Okay. So what we'll do first is, is we'll have you guys make a roll just to see, whoa, the wind's picking up just to see, uh, if you can get hired. And then uh, for those of you that get hired, then we'll, we'll figure out who hired you because I actually have quite a few merchants to choose from. Cool. <laughs> are we all trying to get hired by the same guy or are we going to all have to make an individual check? Uh, you guys will all make an individual check. Um, it probably, e each merchant usually hires maybe a couple or a few guards. So it probably won't be possible for you all to be hired by the same person. Oh, this is cool. But a couple of you could be hired by the same person. Um, so the check is either charisma, persuasion, or strength athletics, whichever, whichever you prefer. Charisma, and this is just persuasion or athletics. Yeah. And this is just to see when you're kind of interviewing, like how much you impress the various merchants with your ability to, to be a guard or, or whatever. And, and again, this guy that, uh, uh, what's his face? All the, all the names went out of my head. Um, your, your paladin friend hooked you up with this merchant that that's kind of giving you good references. Okay. Title like such an all those things. No, it just basically gives like, yeah, so that you speak. know who to talk to and. Okay. Well, I'll approach somebody and I will. Um, is this a, are we guarding caravans on a boat? No, this will be over land. You'll be taking the tradeway oh, north. You. Okay. Um, yeah, so I will tell him that I am familiar with handling animals and I also, uh, have no small amount of, uh, strength. I'm not trained in athletics, but I want to check if my guidance spell can be used on myself. I think it can. Uh, one willing creature. Okay, yeah. so here we go. Um, and this is going to be with a plus two for my strength. That was terrible. And here's my guidance for another two. Okay. <laughs> that is actually enough for you to be hired as a basic guard for five gold pieces per 10 day, plus food and living expenses while on the road. That's not a bad gig. I can see why people would hire on with these guys. Okay. Right, it works. I'm used to being around the common man. That's kind of my thing. So plus I'll be I'll be well hidden down there. So <laughs> <laughs> So Mastig is a basic guard. He's very basic. He's doing hey, the basic. Dude. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, at least you're getting paid. If you rolled lower than that, you wouldn't be getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> they just they let you tag along. <laughs> All, All right, right, who wants to go next? Here's to getting paid. Tybal can go next. Okay. 
Here's your guidance, Tyvel. Um, thanks. Well, I don't um, know that you can give the others guidance because you're not necessarily with them. Yeah. Because oh. you all kind of go so, and um, interview separately. Is there like a way I could use insight to maybe like size up like who would be acquiesced to having like a shape changing, you know, I can become a bear slash also a healer. Do you want to tell them all your abilities though? I mean, it's like, come on, who do you want yeah. protecting you? Um, Tyvel's not good at this kind of thing. He sucks at all the necessary stats to roll. <laughs> um, so, you know, he's just kind of reading off, you know, where books had told him, you know, he can become a bear. What's more protective than a bear? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, let's see how you do. And he rolls a 25. <laughs> I mean, rolled an insight check. Yeah, that's insight. That's the wrong oh. roll. Oh, well, my, my, my I was gonna say, what are you talking about? Oh, 25. then you must have. Yeah, then I didn't get an answer to my question, and I guess that answer was ultimately no. Um. Well, I mean, this is all figured into this this roll here. Okay, so, so what can I roll? Either charisma? charisma, persuasion, or strength, athletics. Okay, so there's no reason to roll charisma because charisma is persuasion. Um, well, persuasion, charisma, persuasion is you could uh, have training and the specific yeah. skill. Yeah. So if you don't I have persuasion, suck it's just hard charisma. at both of those, but I suck worse at athletics. Um, so let's be persuasive. Hey, that's my that's my uh, passive. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so that's actually a pretty good roll. Uh, this is not a super hard scale here. <laughs> I guess not. Boy, there. Um, so we're going to have fun explaining this. So Mastic got hired as a basic guard. Tyvel somehow um, spins this tale about turning into a bear and how awesome he would be as a, as a caravan guard and gets hired as a sergeant. <laughs> it's dwarf racism is what it is. <laughs> Man, so, could so, I, I should have just said, hey, you know what? Forget <laughs> minus six to 25. I rolled a 19 originally. So... Um, yeah, I'm wearing so, plate armor for God's sakes. So you get paid eight gold per ten day, plus food and living expenses on so the road. So this dude who has muscular atrophy from a young age, <laughs> yeah. um, who is walking around in like a green scarf with like flowers and shit on a staff, <laughs> is now a guard sergeant. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Well, I'm you sure know you're in charge, great. so yeah. <clears throat> So you you are expected to manage two to five other guards. Ooh. So that's your job. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Chrissy to get a crit on like a persuasion or something. <laughs> and they're like, the hey, you know what? Just it. take the caravan. It's yours now. <laughs> Wait, she couldn't have been throwing her on bardic inspiration for these, right? Well, Is no, because those... again, she's not with you. Yeah. Oh, or, does however, she does she have however to bardic inspiration lasts 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, we're all like we're we're at like the the, the employment offices. Yeah, right. So exactly. we're like shuffling in the line. <laughs> like, right, yeah. and you guys are and you, you guys are talking to different merchants too, presumably. Up. I mean, we'll figure out in a minute who's where, but it's like a little old lady with like a cigarette and a cup of coffee. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Maybe we should have picked the merchants first, and we would have known who who was with who. So, but so Navarra is going to go up to her person and just be like I may not look like much but I swear to you I can convince your enemies to leave you alone or better yet to give you their money <laughs> there you go oh, look at this wow this, yeah surprise surprise yeah so you're actually off the scale at that point um you own the business now you you're the owner you just talked him into selling so Naivari you are hired as a bodyguard for one of the merchants. Um, and you will make 10 gold per 10 day, plus food and living expenses. Be the sergeant. This is hilarious. But if I'm a bodyguard, I don't have to worry about anybody but this one guy. I don't have right. to tell people what to do. Right. All I have to do is convince people not to hit this guy, which is really easy for me. Yeah, you've got the cushion job. Like middle management. You got like yeah. one of those jobs where you gotta take shit from both sides. <laughs> Yeah. I love how the most martial character has the crappiest job. 
Yeah, I'm wearing plate armor. That shit is worth fifteen hundred gold pieces. <laughs> well, you just you just like any you, you look like a mook to them, you know. Ah, look it's at racism. this guy. Everybody's yeah. got plate armor. They're just <laughs> harpers are just handing that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> All right, Trevor. <laughs> Baron's gonna walk up to him and say, "I'm great with these two swords, and I'm pretty good at a long shot as well." You don't hire me, I'll fucking cut you. <laughs> and then I'm gonna steal all your shit. Don't hire me. That's right. Damn it. Four. Oh, oh. god. You're a basic card, I think. Oh. Might just be um, <laughs> unfortunately, Thurin, no one is interested in hiring me. <laughs> um, um, but you can tag along as a traveler. I'm gonna oh. use my inspiration. Oh, really? Okay. He's feeling inspired. It's very Let's see if he's here. destined to be a nobody on this on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that ain't better. Um, yeah, that's still the same result. <laughs> so I needed at least a six. Yeah. Um, however, guards sometimes quit or die on the road. So there's a chance if that happens that, that you could get hired as a as a replacement later. Somebody's just walking along. You go up and Babic stab him as he falls down. You just gonna hop into a spot. Just keep walking. I, I think that's karma for stealing those pearls. Thorn <laughs> gets fed up, goes and starts. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! All right, so so there are a bunch of merchants, and these guys all have like really crazy names that are going to be fun right, to try to pronounce. I guess. Um, before I leave, how much are rations? Uh, I don't know. It's in the player's handbook. It's in the player's handbook in the equipment right. chapter. I look it up. Uh, you don't have Ulysses to give you food anymore. Tyvel's got Goodberry, but I don't know how I feel about using slots on Goodberry. Isn't that for healing? Yeah, well, it also gives you 24 hours of food and drink. Oh, nice. Wow. A full nourishment. Mm -hmm. So when, when you guys pick a merchant, are you more concerned about what their like what they're selling or what they're carrying or are you more concerned about like their race or just kind of what they're like Tyvo could get on with like a farmer or like a seed merchant or something like that or like a florist um you know all right well here's here's what they're carrying you've got one who's carrying furs and uncured hides that is a male human uh one is carrying ales who is actually supplying the caravan with uh, beer on the journey because you can't really the make... Chuck wagon? <laughs> yeah, you can't really make good money, I guess, selling beer because everybody makes their own beer. Um, but this is he's going to make his money selling beer to people in the caravan during the trip. Uh, we can make our own What beer. race is he? He is a male half-elf. Oh, we can make our I own totally want to be his bodyguard. Okay. So his name is Bade Set Seshapol. <laughs> uh, let's see. What do we know about him? I have no idea how to set this. How many days is it going to take? Well, you, you don't know because you don't know how far these guys are going necessarily. Well, how many days of rations should I buy then? Well, you can buy food on the caravan. So I guess don't, that'll work. If you go all the way to Waterdeep, it'll probably take you two months. Woo! Which you think that that's where they're going based on the map that you guys saw in their in their camp. Um. So, so this guy is uh, he is diplomatic and has a gift for diffusing arguments. Hey, that sounds right up your alley. However, he is very careless about gear and horses, a fault that could cause friction with those who hate to see a horse mistreated through thoughtlessness. This doesn't really give a crap about his horses. <laughs> he, I, that, that's kind of, eh. Nevar doesn't care either. <laughs> You'd think there's probably a lot of information to be gathered from that guy because everybody's going to be buying beer, right? So it, it's kind of know, a hanging yeah. I definitely want to hang thing. around the ale cart. <laughs> For more than one reason. 
Does the elk cart not have dwarves? Not, not only that, but he's not human. So those are her two qualifications. One, it's a good place to get information. Two, the dude's not human. Nice. Humans are stupid. Whoa, racism. Racism, I love it. Naivara is racist. <laughs> it's kind of an elfy thing to be. This is true. It says so in the player's handbook. Does it? Yeah. In the humans, everybody's second best friend uh, part, it's like uh, elves. They're great as long as they're not being racist assholes. <laughs> <laughs> that's paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what it says. I like your version. Yeah, yeah. I think that's as, long right. as, you, as long as they get past their like racial pride is what they call it. We have so a feel... female moon elf who is carrying exotic wood from Chalt. A male gold dwarf who is carrying scented cooking oils and perfumes from Amun. A male human who nobody knows what he's carrying. A male moon elf carrying wooden carvings from the elves of Cormir. Another male human carrying Kalashite silk. A male human carrying exotic birds. And a male human carrying porcelain items. I want to sign on with the guy with nobody knows what he's carrying. Of course. Okay. Let's see, where is he? That's a question. Didn't wasn't Ivar's husband human? Yes. Hmm. It was very much a Beauty and the Beast kind of story there. He gave her a library. <laughs> a massive library. I'm not gonna go for the very uh lowbrow joke that I was going to find in that. Alright, so this guy's name is Les Felro the Silent. <laughs> Hey guys, he's not shady or anything. And I, I think that whoever came up with the names for this campaign should um, find a new profession because these are <laughs> yeah, terrible. They're terrible, aren't they? I think they're, just, they're all tongue twisters. Yeah, it's like no one would have this name. Tyvel is going to go with Harvey Birdman. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. That makes sense. I mean, um, I was, I was, I was debating between exotic wood and Harvey Birdman. I feel like, I, I feel like. Mastig ended up with the guy who nobody knows what he's carrying because that's the only guy who would have him. <laughs> could be, could be. Or ultimately, maybe he's like a paladin and he's just got a really creepy name and the silent just means he took a vow of silence. Uh, the other cool thing about this guy uh, is he has a gargoyle guarding his wagon. Awesome. <laughs> okay, then. Um, Maybe he had his tongue cut out for insulting a dwarf. Yeah, so from time to time, he inexplicably breaks into merry songs and short stretches of joke telling. Uh, his voice is a fine tenor and his jokes are hilarious. But these gregarious moods are always short. The rest of the time, he is silent as the grave, staring sullenly at the road ahead. See, I told you his name meant nothing. Is that no. my guy? Or is yeah, that that's your guy. Yeah. Oh. Las okay. Felro the Silent. So he's so okay. So he's the guy with the gargoyle. Yes. And he is bipolar. Yeah, he's the bipolar <laughs> gargoyle owner who okay. occasionally just switches on from yeah, dude, party. <laughs> to, right. Hmm. So does he? What am I guarding with him? What is he? He's got a big wagon. That's all yeah. He's got up. a big wagon, and it's okay. it's. Uh, kind of like it looks like something out of like deadwood like it's got all these bulky shapes in it but it's all covered with a tarp that's like nailed down so you can't look under it and target and all that yeah so he's the cultist guy on the caravan <laughs> no that's so totally a red herring There's no <laughs> way yeah let's follow the silent you can't see his stuff it's filled with grandfather clocks yeah yeah at least his name isn't red herring yeah of course, that'd be too easy to pronounce, so that, yeah. that won't work. <laughs> yeah, that breaks the first rule. All right, and then Tyvel is working for Oin even more. Who? Oin. Oin. <laughs> I think that is an actual name, though. Oin. That's, oin, oin, oin. That's like Norwegian <laughs> or something. He's an independent wagon master hauling exotic birds to the lucrative markets in Waterdeep. He's a stubborn and argumentative man with strong <laughs> opinions about almost everything, but he's generous when it comes to pouring drinks for those who will sit and argue with him endlessly. Cool. So if, if Kyle Why were the here, hell? 
<laughs> Why the hell am I not hanging out with this guy? I mean, seriously. Maybe. Arguing is kind of I what I do. I just have to consider that the fact maybe Tyva would be against birds being sold as profit, but then again, as a Chantea, it's not like... I mean, he is part of the Emerald Enclave, but it's not like he's like an anarchist. It's kind of a civilization... Right, you know, nature come together kind of thing. Right, and it's not you know they probably don't have like an animal rights concept yeah. at this point. You know, right. I mean, as long um, as the dude isn't like walking around like beating the birds with a stick, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Tybal would be okay with it. Yeah, it's but, not like Tybal is a member of uh, PETA. Yeah, PETA. <laughs> For all Tybal knows, maybe those birds like being owned by people. I mean, if I was a bird, I would totally want to be owned by some rich dude. Just hang out. Squats right. occasionally get fed. No That's predators. right, no predators. Yeah. yeah. That's a pretty sweet gig. Yeah. So of, yeah. there there are quite a few. There's a total of 11 wagons in this caravan. Some of the other interesting people on the caravan is a woman people call Green Imsa, but her name's Imsa, and she is green. So people are very creative with their names in Forgotten Realms, very creative people. Um, <laughs> she it, Her hair is green. Her skin is green, her eyes are green, and she seems to be human. So, you know, normally humans aren't green, so that's kind of odd. Uh, there's the guy with the gargoyle. Um, let's see. There's one dude called Sewell's Deg the Pole, who's seven foot five inches tall. I'm guessing he's really scrawny, though. <laughs> if he's called the Pole. Yeah. Yeah, he is a tall dude. Probably the he's tallest called, human any of you have ever seen. He's called the pole for a total different reason. Yeah. Totally different reason. Unrelated. Yeah. If you one want to come into his tent, he'll tall. tell you why he's called the pole. <laughs> because he's really tall and one of his legs is a fake wooden stick. So he carries a Maybe. pole. Maybe. One of the caravan's guards may die on our trip. <laughs> They're in may or may not have anything to do with that. Good to have the heads up, heads up on that, I guess. <laughs> By the way, I'm going to be preparing. Do I get, a, do we get an opportunity to prepare spells before we leave? Yeah, you guys have a week, so okay. Every yeah. divination spell I have. So, so I'm I don't know. How it's in that deal. I don't know if this is even necessary, but everybody, you know, is at full hit points. Everybody has all their hit die, hit dice. Because you guys have had to make a performance check for that week, you know, and just hang out in the bar and perform all week. Sure. There you go. Nice. Yeah, I guess since we're going, I had come up with a system. I guess, I guess the new I strings it. are. Yeah. The yeah, they're working a lot better. Was it to the crust? <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm definitely going to check out to see what druid spells are that's good for, like, a traveling sequence. The montage? Yeah, for the sweet That's montage. the name of your caravan, the montage. Yeah. Only it means something totally different in Forgotten Realms. It means a oh. caravan. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right. Let's see if there's anything else I should tell you. Fog cloud might be useful. Prayer of healing. Cure wounds might as well just be a permanent. Now, I'm not a spellcaster that often. This is like the first time I've ever done a spellcaster. So, with ritual spells, do I have to prepare those? Yes. Or can you, I just, yeah, okay. Yeah. You prepare them, but the thing is, if you cast them as a ritual, which takes 10 minutes, they don't consume one of your spell slots. Okay. So, that's the big yeah. advantage. Is but yeah, you do have to prepare them just like any other one. Unless, of course, it's your circle of the moon or whatever. No, I, yeah. That yeah, would I be think wizards bad. don't have to prepare them because they use their spell book. But. Yeah. So uh, get ready for this, Lex, because I'm casting every divination spell I have. <laughs> okay. I'm going to figure out what's in there. And I'm going to try oh, to for the wagon. Some, yeah. And just in general, you know, so... Okay. And the, I guess before we leave, um, I'm not jumping ahead, am I? No. 
Okay. Before we leave, I want to uh, cast Augury, which is where I cast the rune stones. And you tell me whether it's going to have a good or bad result. Okay. Um, and it's an omen about a specific course of action I plan to take in the next 30 minutes. Um, and that the course of action I'm going to take is guarding this caravan. So I don't know. It's kind of up to you. It's either wheel for good results, woe for bad results, or both or neither. So it's kind of up to you. Okay. For guarding the caravan. Yeah. Um, well, since I don't know how to tell the future, <laughs> okay, it's hard to say. Um, I, I think you would probably get like a neither result because okay. there, there are definitely some dangers ahead of you that you will probably be able to overcome. Um, but, okay. but we don't know. Okay. So I guess. I guess I have to do the cop out and say neither. <laughs> okay, that's fine. It's a ritual, so I don't lose any resources. But, but at least you don't have to worry about like the caravan being swallowed by the earth like tomorrow. Right. That's, yeah. Neither. Then is I better would say. Than bad, so. Then I would say, oh, something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so that took ten minutes to cast. Can I take another ten minutes to cast detect magic? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna cast that as a ritual too. And, so, are you doing um, this that, maybe why every while everybody's like hitching horses to their wagons and yeah, getting that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, okay. I was gonna kind of try to do a little bit on the sly, but cool. I don't know how much, more, how much I can. I can concentrate on it for ten minutes. So, over the course of ten minutes, I'm gonna focus specifically on the wagon. Um, and you can see that detect magic has that thing where I think it can be. Um, it can be shielded by a thin layer of lead and so on and so forth, I believe. Okay. Uh, you do not detect any magic. I don't detect any magic. Okay. <clears throat> How about the gargoyle? Um, I don't think gargoyles are inherently magic. They're elementals. I think we determined last week. Uh, the gargoyle okay. is tethered to the wagon with a silver chain. Hmm. Okay. Actually, I take I that want... back. The, the chain is magical because the chain seems too delicate to actually hold it, but it does. Okay. So the chain is magical, but other than that, you don't detect any magic in the wagon. And the other I don't want to mess with that guy. All right. Well, if that takes up the whole 10 minutes, uh, that's what I'll do. But if I have any time left over, I'm going to go over and swing around um, Green Imsa and Solstig the Pole and just see if they're carrying any magic on them. Okay. Uh, the pole is not, and who, <laughs> who was the other one? Green Imsa. Green Imsa. The, the pole's all natural, baby. <laughs> he is all natural. <laughs> um, Green Imsa is actually radiating a faint magic aura um, that She's... seems to be coming from her. Not she's something she's wearing. Druidcraft, or she's um, prestidigitated to be green. Yeah. Um, the spell would tell me the school of magic. If, okay. If you so, want to get into that, if you don't want to deal with that, that's fine. Well, it would be alteration. Alteration. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure that's a school, actually. Maybe transmutation. Is that what you're thinking? Probably. Or, yeah. Okay. Alteration. Okay. Let me look. Andre. Enchant, okay. evocation, illusion, necromancy, transmutation. Okay. Yeah, transmutation. Okay. Just because right. I'm looking at spellless, right? Now. Did alteration used to be a school and they renamed it, or am I just? You're. I, I, I mean, it's a school in the Elder Scrolls series of games. Oh, maybe that's what. Uh, if that, yeah. if, if if you have any experience with those, <laughs> these I, things start to all kind of blend together, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all these words that mean the same thing. D and D and all its spin-offs, basically. Yeah. By the way, I bought Pillars of Eternity. In fact, I was downloading it before we were done playing last week. <clears throat> and it is quite good. What is that? Uh, Pillars of Eternity. It's a PC game. Uh, wow. they, they call it the spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate. Mm. Yeah, it's really it's really good. Uh, I say it's really good, and I've only played it for like 30 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. since I've owned it. But it's good. Yeah, it's pretty fun. 
cool. I don't know. It's because like I've made one class, like one character for every class, played like oh, all the yeah. way up to the, the Gilded Vale. Right. Quit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah I want right. to do a different one. They're all great. Uh, yeah, I have still have yet to figure out how chanters work, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty the first good. time I played, I don't know if you went and inspected the bear, the one guy talks about, like in front of Gilded Vale. I don't know. There's like a dude. He's like, yeah, we got attacked. There's a bear up north. Don't go there. And I was like, I'm gonna go to the bear. One shot. You killed you. Yeah, it one oh, shot. Yeah, I know. yeah. There's definitely. It's not like scaled like a lot of games. You'll yeah. never fight anything you can't handle. No, if you go to the wrong place, it'll smoke you. Yeah, yeah, it's happened several times. Or the one basement filled with spiders and gilded bell. Oh yeah, spiders. I killed like six of those in those ruins. So yeah. what? Oh, two shots. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, exactly. And I like that. I like games that don't pull the punches like that. Yeah, it's like D and D. I mean, if we walked up to like a full on like ancient black dragon that didn't like us. Yep. Yep. I have every confidence that Lex would teach us a lesson. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> all right so when you guys spotted the cultists that you recognized um they some of them brought in a pa palanquin 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 yeah palanquin yeah it's, it's like um, uh the thing that they carry nobles in it's like slaves carry oh, it like and that they... thing where there's like two dudes on each side and it's like a little moving yeah like, yeah, and this is, it's completely enclosed. You guys know, having been in the city for a week now, that the nobles of Baldur's Gate commonly travel by these because horses and whatnot aren't allowed in the city. Um, but some of these cultists that you recognize come in carrying one of these. And everybody, I guess is how it's pronounced. Everybody make a perception roll if you want. So in England and America, they're known as litters. Now, can I give myself guidance, or do I not know? Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Perceive deeply. God damn it. I got a passive 16. Come on now. Okay. So I got a 16. Okay. So... I was too busy messing with some birds. Yeah. So, so Tyvel doesn't notice, but the rest of you notice. You can kind of peer in between... Uh, some of the curtains in the side of this thing and you see uh, a part of a face that has black scales on it which you Spooky. guess is probably Resmir who you've yet not met but you've heard so much about the half black dragon leader of, of these people you've been dealing with hmm. um, let me just take a look at my divination spells here uh, some of these are one action so Locate object to see if he's got that dragon egg because I can locate any object as long as I've seen it before. Okay, so the, sure. The dragon egg that was that was in the wagon two weeks ago. Well, the, if it's within a thousand miles, it's going to tell yeah. you in what direction it is. is Does it, it work for a thousand miles? Any, thousand miles. It's crazy. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, by all means, yeah. I the green dragon that. egg that you guys lost? Yeah. That's what you're trying to locate. No, it's a thousand feet. Is it? Oh, yeah. I, I, well, I that's was... a bit different. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was crazy. I was going to say that's pretty yeah. awesome for what level? I think spell the, is that? there's probably I think a couple levels up. I think you go up to a mile. <laughs> okay. Does it locate? Okay, it is. It is not. Um, okay. It is not within range of the spell. Okay. Is it find or locate? Locate. It's locate. So also, uh, you, you see them bring in this, this palanquin, or however you say it, and uh, they proceed to... Locate object 1,000 miles. Where are you reading that? Unless this sheet's just wrong. It must be wrong, because I just looked in the book, that. and it was feet. Okay, go. <laughs> uh, where was it? Okay, so they um, purchase five wagons and supplies, and um, local porters start packing merchandise into them. Um, everything is boxed or wrapped, so you can't see what the merchandise is. 
hey, maybe they need bodyguards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, you know, as they pack the wagons, they then cover them in canvas and lash the canvas down, which is pretty common, you know, for the wagons. So that is an, in itself unusual. But you guys kind of see all this happening while while everybody's getting ready. There's none. Is there 10 minutes for me to cast Detect Magic again? I guess I could just cast it as a regular spell. Yeah, there's there's time. Okay, I'll, just, I'll catch it as a ritual then, and I'll kind of go over there five wagons real quick. No, are you are you doing this at the the palanquin or at the wagons or or what? Um, I guess, I guess I'll start at the palanquin, just so I kind of know what's there. Palanquin. 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 Yeah, palanquin. I asked the internet. The internet's never wrong. Now, this isn't yeah. the same person that told you to locate object was a thousand feet. Hey, man, just... this, spell sheet, <laughs> this spell sheet that I've got for druids says a thousand miles. So it's wrong. Well, is it, it from fifth it. edition? Because this spell has yeah. been around forever. Yeah, it is. Okay. It's written by the Because it's got the elemental evil stuff in it and everything. So. Um, I guess. It's probably just a typo. Yeah. Yeah, I will cast a gay ass on the palanquin. No, um. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the detect magic in the palanquin. Okay. And see see what it finds. Again, a thin layer of lead will block it and all that other stuff. Well, it is not lead. Um, you actually yeah. sense an extremely strong magical aura coming from it. Okay. And I guess I have to tell you what school this, it would be, right? Yeah, the school. Yeah. Let's see. Abjuration is like protective. Illusion is illusion, obviously. <laughs> Transmutation is when things actually change form. Um, evocation is, I don't know, I always just thought of that as blowing shit up, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah what else is there? Yeah, some Divination is what I'm using. Um, so that would be like those Palantirs from Lord of the Rings would be divination kind of thing. And um, enchantment is, of course, enchanting stuff. Yep. Yeah. Enchantment is like what I do. Let's see. What okay, I'm using be? this quick spell sheet instead because this one says a thousand feet. Fuck the a thousand mile <laughs> one. It has lost all um, portents in my mind. And this one has the elemental evil spells on it anyway. So. Nice. I think you would sense some enchantment. Um, hmm. This is tricky. Let's see. But an extreme. Is. Like a very, very, like a, like an extreme amount of enchantment. Yeah. It's like totally extreme. Does it tell you the level like totally or anything metal. like that? I mean, yeah, I think you get the general power level, but. <laughs> it's over 9,000. Huh? Um, I don't know the new version. I only know the old version. Yeah, you'd get enchantment and divination for sure. Okay. Yeah, let me look it up real quick because it used to give you like an idea of what level spell it was, basically. It's it used to give you the exact number of auras, and it happens to be on page two thirty one. Two thirty one. What what level? If you sense magic in this general. way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object if that area bears in the area that bears magic, and you learn its school of magic if any. So I guess it doesn't really give you the power level of what you're looking at. Although that would kind of be intuitive that you would get something. Right. Like that, but. Well, I will tell you it's it's pretty powerful. You can't tell what it is because it's something inside of the the palanquin that you can't mm -hmm. see, but it's strong enough that the aura is actually kind of emanating outside of it. Um, cool. But you do sense divination and... Um, enchantment you think there might be some other auras as as well good but there's something know. going good on in know. there good to know yeah very cool let me see what else do i got i can uh <laughs> i can detect evil and good although i don't think that's going to help quite so much um i can detect poison or disease i could find traps <laughs> I mean, I it's guess a I trap! Yeah. <laughs> Admiral I Akbar needed that. Yeah. 
I'll do I'll do a detect evil good. So I know if an if an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, undead, and desecrated or consecrated area within thirty feet of me. Oh, so it doesn't just detect alignment, it's one of those things. Right. For okay. the duration, you know if there is an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead within 30 feet of you, as well as where the creature is located. Uh, similarly, you know if there is a place or object within 30 feet of you that has been magically consecrated or desecrated. And this can also be blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. So. Okay. Um, I think what do I there's feel only going to be one thing that you sense. What's that gargoyle? Yeah. Note to self. Make bad guys wear lead line suits. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if it's a rogue, though, you won't get to know because rogue types can change their alignment for that kind of thing, I think. If that's still in fifth edition, I'm not really sure. Well, that's yeah, so cool, the gargoyle though. you sense because he's an elemental. Okay, that's and it. that's it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, well, we know he's not undead or, you know, we've learned what he's not, so that's <laughs> Well, you guys know that Resmir is a half dragon. Yeah. I just wondered if maybe if he's a fiend, that maybe gives us a little bit more of a clue. Yeah, but... he's spooky. And she's oh, a she, yeah. too. You guys know that, yeah. too. Oh, okay. And I'm sure the picture of it has a really weird face off to the side of the head. Like all of them. <laughs> Have I given you guys a picture yet? No. Resmir? I'm just, just because every other picture, the faces have been really weird. Right, like for yeah. like Merit Night Heal, especially if it's like more, if it looks more like Langdorosa here, then it's probably not as bad. But like Frulam and Night Hill, and <laughs> yeah, Night Hill, Night Hill he's, them. he's not rocking a forehead, he's rocking a yeah. five head there. <laughs> for all, for whatever reason, this artist, all the faces are just up and to the left. Every yeah, day. maybe he was a Kennedy conspiracy theory fan, back and to the left. <laughs> Sorry, that was terrible. <clears throat> All right, so so you guys uh, get underway. Yay! You have yeah. a long journey ahead of you. Basically, the way this works is the caravan travels about eight hours every day, and um, you know it pauses a couple times in the day for you know, the horses to rest and for, for the horses to eat and drink and stuff like that. Um, and mules, there's mules too. Uh, many of the nights you spend camping along the road. Uh, most small towns you come across have roadside inns if travelers want more comfort and walled hostelries cater catering to wagon caravans are spread a few days apart. And let's see, where does it say? Huh. I can never find things when I'm running the game that I know are in here. They stop every few days and take a day off, basically, which is what I'm trying to find for the horses to rest. Okay. I think it's every seven days they rest one, but I can't find it right now. And this journey is like slated to take what a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. If you if you stay with them all the way to Waterdeep, it's seven hundred and fifty miles, and it will take about two months. And I'd walk seven hundred and fifty miles, and I'd walk seven hundred and fifty more. Yeah, here it is. So the animals need one day off after every six days of hauling. You guys cool. cover about fifteen miles a day. Wow, we're all an ass. Even I can keep up with that. <laughs> and um, the road itself is gravel for about the first day's travel out of Baldur's Gate, and then it becomes dirt. So. So how many days do we travel till something interesting happens? <laughs> until something Basically, yeah, I guess. Explodes. I mean, I don't want to put it that way, but... And I guess... You know, if things are just going normally, I plan on casting my full slate of detect magic, detect poison, disease, detect evil. I'm hitting everybody every day. I want to just wander. I want to get as much out of this stuff as I can. 
Okay. So I don't know if that's reasonable to think, you know, just. Sure. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's uh, detect evil good, detect magic, detect poison and disease. And uh, find traps if anything's trapped. (laughs) Why not? Um, If anything's trapped, Thurin's got it covered. He can disarm that. He thinks poison Tyvel is just loaded with anti-poison stuff. Which is weird. Whatever. I went for utility spells. Alright, so on the map, so you guys we got the little barrel here from Baldur's Gate. Party barrel. You should have found us a little side on caravan picture. Yeah, right? A little wagon or something? Yeah. I should have. All right. So, wow, this map is really low res. <laughs> Pretty. Okay, so you can't even hardly see it, but there's this road called the Coastway that goes to the Tradeway, which is where you guys are going. And so, you guys are in the Fields of the Dead. Fun times. Oh. I'm and, sure it's great. Yeah, so this I I believe is moors and and things like that, um, kind of rocky, sort of barren terrain, and you guys travel for a good. Let me look at my cheat sheet here. Um, eleven days without really anything interesting happening. So right. so you've you've made your first ten days. So those of you getting paid get paid. Oh, yay. What sort of information do I find out, you know, being what? that I live around the ale cart? By live, I mean work. Uh, and those money. of you who have to be get um, pay for food, how much is that? Steve! Well, you can just pay your um, lifestyle that you want. All right. Whichever, whatever level you want for, for 11 days. 20 gold pieces. <laughs> So is there anything specific you want to know, Navara, or any specific kind of information? Um, I mean, I would be most trying to listen to maybe ask questions about, but probably not because I don't really want people to know that I'm knowing <laughs> hey, about it. you guys it, know about this like, evil dragon cult that we're hunting? Yeah. <laughs> like, listen, listen more specifically to what whatever this cult is the the people that I know are what the cult are talking about. But like, okay. If I hear anything related to it. Yeah. The, uh, the few people that you recognize from the camp that you know are part of the cult are being very careful. You never hear them like say anything about the cult. Um, they don't talk to each other. Um, they're all just kind of playing their parts as loyal cabin cavern or cavern, uh, caravan guards just like you guys are um yeah they they uh they're being pretty pretty much on the down low okay now from the guy who who uh is who i'm the bodyguard for he's a social person do i hear any interesting rumors about um particularly important people within the any of the lands like does he have any particularly interesting rumors or stories that he tells uh about people in the caravan or just anybody people in the caravan people in Baldur's Gate people in Waterdeep people who are rumored to live within the, the territories like oh have you heard about this cult for example, like if for some reason he knows about that, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, well, you, you definitely hear talk about the dragon cult. I mean, people know about that. They're concerned about it. Um, you also hear about... Oh, where is that? Oh, there's my notebook. You hear about a a dragon. Uh, I don't think it's on your route. 
Crawl. Duranthar? No. <laughs> Different dragon. <laughs> Our nemesis. Ah. <laughs> Hey, welcome, Steve. Oh, Steve, you're going to get a great laugh out of our ca uh, caravan positions. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm excited. Let's see. You're going to have to find out yours, too. But, man, is it great. I assume I'm your shit show more. Oh, you get Since a roll for it. He could have a punishment and have to join me. Yeah, he's always. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. So, in the Mayor of Dead Men, and I'm trying to find this on the map. The Mayor of Headman or mirror? Yeah. I'm not sure how you yeah. pronounce it. I think, it's, I think it's a mare, actually. M e r e, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like there was a dude who's the mayor, <laughs> like like a mayoral. The candidate. king of the dead. <laughs> the mayor of all dead men. Like, oh I god. Oh, I should look in the book. It's a lot easier to see. Sweet than... title. Uh, mayor of dead men. I've heard of this before. I just I don't know where it is. Well, it's very very close, but. In terms of copyright law, significantly different than the one in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of stuff in Forgotten Realms is like that. Yeah. Entirely different from yeah. one of the Lord of the Rings. Uh, oh, why can't I, I find it? I thought I saw it on this map, but I, I know it's on here yeah. somewhere. I just can't find it. It is like a swamp or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the 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 Mirror of Deadmen. It oh, is, here it is. Uh, it's a sea. It's 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 a cove. It's like a sea cove thing. Yeah, it's north of Waterdeep, but you yeah. hear tales okay, so. of a black dragon that lives there named Vor Vorar. Let me try this again. Voragamanth. Oh my God, Voragamanthar. Right <laughs> you know what? Here, I'll type it. That's how he stays such a secret. <laughs> I would literally practice this if we were this far in the adventure, but I didn't know I would be having yeah. to say so this. Tonight. It's a salt swamp, <laughs> roughly a hundred miles long, wow. thirty miles wide. A couple of nice silent letters in there. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Voragamanthar, I think is <laughs> graveyard filled with dwarves, elves, and humans of the, fallen, of the fallen kingdom. Yeah. So, so this black dragon is said to kind of rule. Well, this area it lives in a swamp there. filled with corpses for a long time sounds like a badass and it's a salt swamp so those corpses stay kind of fresh and the you know and pickled. all the muck and stuff yeah they're like pickled yeah. <laughs> do i get any sense of how there. old it might have been the dragon mm -hmm. um definitely fully grown no one really knows how old he is, but he's he's, he's big. The black dragon I was talking about earlier, Dwayne. Yeah. Is it? it? I don't know. No, I was no. talking about how consequences and stuff. So, Steve, uh, to get you caught up, dragon. you get to make a charisma, persuasion, or strength <laughs> athletics roll. Okay, strength athletics. To see how good of a job you get on the caravan. <laughs> so you got to do that flexing thing. Oh, that we saw nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that gift. Yeah, that gift. So, so oh, yeah. That's the best gift. So you are a bodyguard for one of the merchants, Uthgrim. Personal so, bodyguard. So Sounds the positions great. that are currently exist are Uthgrim and Nivara are bodyguards. <laughs> Mastic okay. is a shit shoveler. <laughs> no, Durin, he's a guard. Yeah. He guards Durin and shovel shit. No rank, and Tyvel is a guard sergeant. <laughs> Rando. Flower power. <laughs> Kind of random. So you, so uh, Theron, what, what do you do, Theron? You just hang out all day? Basically. They wouldn't hire him. <laughs> you rolled a four, inspired to a five. Wow. He's dead. Yeah. fucked up. No one you else wanted to help me. So, so Steve, wow. you will make ten. <laughs> Steve, you will make ten gold per ten day. Oh, sweet. And, no, I and mean you, five. Is that right? Yeah. So you guys are eleven days in. So everybody got paid once at this point. So everyone made money, but Theron had to spend 20. <laughs> Shit, man. Speaking of which, when is one of those um, guards going to show up dead? <laughs> um, you know what? You can roll again, Theron, because people kind of come and go. Um, as you guys pass settlements and stuff, like sometimes what? a merchant It'll will come three. or go. So, you can make so who, is, who is Uthgrim bodyguarding for? Yeah, we need to figure that out. Oh, yeah. Whoever it is, they're going to love it. Heck, I just don't want to have to pay money. <laughs> All right. So 
Um, there's one guy who is oh. carrying furs and uncured hides. That's enough. <laughs> Four, five, six. <laughs> uh, the worst. There's a guy who's carrying all the ale for the caravan. But I'm bodyguarding him. I was going to say, that seems like a tough job. I don't want to guard him. There's a female moon elf who's carrying exotic her. wood from Chult. Yeah. No, her. Definitely her. Okay. Yeah. Female right. moon elf. Exotic. It all sounds good. Yeah. Her How name is that is... exotic? You have a female moon elf in your party. Yeah, oh, well. she is not sure <laughs> much... Uh... Much interest in that, anything apart from books. This, this one has an accent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so hello. her name is Adelry Level? Level. That can't be right. <laughs> Lul. <laughs> Adelry Level? <laughs> They're just taking game terms and turning them into names. I'm I'm on to them. <laughs> she seems all right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mean, hit point. point. That would be level. <laughs> So who does Thurin make it with since he finally rolled well enough? Well, okay, it. hold on. Let me tell you about uh, Adelry. Uh, yeah, her her wood is loaded with exotic wood from the jungle of Chult for the master carpenters and cabinet makers of Waterdeep to turn into exquisite furniture. Um, she is the exact opposite of Bade Seshapole in temperament. She's impatient with people, but exacting about her wagon and doting on her animals. Fuck. I thought I got away from exacting moon elves. Hey, maybe See, you can... See, it's not an Ivara thing. It's a moon elf thing. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to ascribe certain behaviors to any one race, but I, there's a pattern for me. It's in the book. I didn't make this up. Moon elves are racist bastards. Yeah, they are. They are racially proud. Oh. Gold <laughs> elves are even worse. <laughs> so how does she like my shirt? Your sack. My sack shirt. How does she like um, my sack? She, she does not approve of your shirt, I don't think. Well, too bad. She's paying me anyways. <laughs> yeah, she is. And Thurin, uh, you are a, a just a, a normal guard. So you are making, what was it? Five gold. Five gold. Uthgrim's like, it, would it be better if I just took it off? Oh, I give. She's like, oh yeah, much better. <laughs> That's extra gold, though. Yeah, you gotta pay extra for that. <laughs> you gotta pay five gold extra a week for shirtless service. <laughs> <laughs> the Coastway Gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> I never told you how I made it down the coast. <laughs> All right, so Thurn's a basic guard, five gold per ten day. Um, what did, do you know? Which merchant you want, Thurn, or should I go through him again? Mm, just throw me somewhere. Just throw you somewhere. Um, how about you? Guy. You can be guarding uh, Samardag the Hoper, who is called a Hoper because he is carrying a wagon full of porcelain. Oh. On a bumpy caravan. <laughs> wow. Well, I don't get blamed for it. <laughs> that would be your luck. You finally roll enough to get a job. Next thing you know, you get all your <laughs> Who's going to missed out on the guy that sells, is uh, carrying scented oils with him? Yeah. That would have been Uthgrim's thing. I would have taken payment in oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Thurn, you don't get paid for the first week, but the next week you'll get paid. I'm just glad I don't have to spend money to travel with the caravan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buying stuff off the food truck. Yeah, the check card. <laughs> I, um, as we're traveling, Lex. Yes. Um, I kind of have that uh, background feat, uh, sh um, rustic hospitality, right? Yeah. So I'm kind of like of the common man, and I'm just wondering – I want to ask the other guards and kind of get in good with the other guards. Okay. And, I'll, and I want to learn more about, I'd be like, boy, the guy with the uh, palanquin, he's kind of a big wig, huh? We don't even get to see him. And what's up with that guy? Anybody? Oh, ever seen anybody? she, she comes out after you guys leave the city. Oh, and her okay. full half dragon glory. She was just, uh, she would have gotten mobbed in the city. Okay. Baldur's Gate Gadians or Baldurians, I think they're called, are not very uh, open-minded about non-humanoid okay. people. I'd like to, 
I'd like to take the opportunity to cast Detect Magic again and see if this extremely powerful item that's in the palanquin is on her or if it's still in the palanquin. Uh, It's on her. It's a uh, big axe that she carries. Oh. It's a great axe. Oh, Oh, wow. Oh, you said the magic words right there. What would he do for it? Oh yeah. You actually oh, think it's of dwarven make by the runes and things on it. Speak softly and carry the, a big axe. Wipe the drool off my face. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, after you guys like leave the city, uh, she takes off with uh, some of her guards. You would presume, um, and they're all on horses, and they they like take off on their own ahead, so the caravan can't can't keep up with them. How does a horse carry a half dragon? She's not, they're not that much bigger than, than humans. They have big horses. War horses. <laughs> but yeah, you did get a chance to, to do that before she left and, and okay. see her very magical axe. Okay. Which gave off enchantment and divination, uh, divination magic. Yeah. So that's interesting that an axe would give off divination magic. Those were to hit. No. Well, and I, I will say very... that the auras you saw were of a level of like intricateness that you've never seen around a magic item before. So you uh, think so it's... Things, uh... Yeah. So, um, can I make a can I can I make like a history check? It might be an artifact. I'm a dwarf. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Instead sure. of just a magic yeah. item. Okay, uh, I'm a dwarf, so just a straight up history check. Um, is there any way I can kind of point it out to Nivara? <laughs> I'm probably gonna. So I was gonna it. say, would Nivara <laughs> have seen the item herself? Because she might not have seen the magical aura, but she might have heard a story about an item that looks like Ooh, that. Or, or I could just not that, that it matters. <clears throat> he knows about oh. dwarven shit. Yeah. Nice. Um. Yeah. Okay. With that roll, I kind of have to give you something, don't I? Well, so I'm, be good. I'm getting that axe. I've just achieved another character goal. <laughs> so take, this, uh, this, this axe, this That's axe right. is actually known to you. Um, it yeah. is called Hazaron, and I'll Hazaron. I'll write that because that's another one of these great great names. Um, and artifact. you know that this it was a a magical axe that was made by dwarves long, long, long ago. And it was used in a battle against uh, orcs. And there was this orc warlord, basically, that had brought a bunch of the orc tribes together and was like raiding all over the place and, and making a lot of problems. And a great dwarven warrior slayed him with this axe. And it said that somehow his uh, soul, this orc warlord's soul, became bound in the axe and is actually is. like part of it now. Mm. That is really cool. I love that stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's great. So Hazaron was the name of the, of the orc. So the, the, the axe is like named after him now. Cool. Oh, and also, Steve, uh, I bought, I don't remember, but last week, I bought everybody a net. So everyone has a net. <laughs> so Yeah, I will put that on the list. Well, <laughs> and I think you and I might be the only ones that actually have proficiency using it. But okay. Sure. Everybody has one, so. <laughs> you guys are use it? proficient, but Thurin's going to show you out. Yeah, exactly. With a roll of three, four, or six. <laughs> yeah. No, it was four, five, then six. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're getting better. The next roll is bound to be a seven. <laughs> I, I'm hoping. Sky, sky's the limit, man. You work your way up to middle management where Tyvel's at. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, Steve, just to kind of get you caught up, um, you guys spent a week hanging out in Baldur's Gate. And then you saw some people that you recognized from the raiders camp 
uh, gathering and buying wagons and loading them with supplies and some kind of merchandise. So you guys all got hired onto this caravan that was forming up and you've now traveled um, 11 days north of, of Baldur's, Baldur's Gate. Okay. So and you didn't miss a whole lot. Guys. Yeah, sorry. I, I apologize. I, I hate being late, but... Um... That's all right. Happens. It's unavoidable. Anything interesting happen yet? Uh, something interesting is about to happen, <laughs> but if we're going to take a, a five-minute break, this would be a good point to do, do so. And I need to refill right. my drink. <laughs> yep, sounds good. I need to get a drink. I got to keep the beer train going. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Well, you guys Pretty have a beer time. wagon on the caravan, so oh, you nice. can even drink ale in character. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. All right. I'll be back in a sec. Beer yep. me. Also, I had Starwalker bot regurgitate a lot of stuff in chat, so for anyone watching... Actually, there's a decent little number. Welcome, everyone. Um, you know, there's stuff there you can peruse, both of relevant to this campaign, um, other campaigns of Lex's, other material made by Lex on his podcast and whatnot. Um, that's about it. I don't know. We've got we. So there's people in chat. Yeah, yeah, we got plenty. Okay, I'd just like to make one more plug for Shadow of the Demon Lord Kickstarter. Uh, it's got another. How many? Hey, you can give me a link here in the game i'll paste it in chat oh sure yeah i don't i don't do uh twitch chat so there you go uh there's uh 29 hours to go and it promises to be a really good game uh written by robert schwalb whose name is attached to just about every major role-playing game in the last 15 years or so so it looks like we're closed in on the hundred and twenty thousand um, dollar. What are these called? Stretch goal, which is going to be yet another three uh, adventures. So that'll bring the grand total to twenty that have been unlocked in this Kickstarter. So. The real question that's on all of our hearts and minds is Mastig slash Dwayne, I guess, seeing as we're not in character. Are you going to be running at some point? Some yes, some I, I am. Yes. I hope to get it um, by the time Gen Con comes around. Oh, yeah. I hope to run it at Gen Con. Oh, you're uh, going to be at Gen Con this year? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to schedule everything up this weekend, get my uh, plane tickets. This and... is exciting. So you, me, um, maybe Lex will show up. We can we can be like, hey, look, real life. Right on. Yeah. I plan on uh, doing a lot of games. So yeah. it's a, kind of a question whether my brother's going to come with me or not, but either awesome. way. And you live there, right? You live in uh, Yeah. I, I mean, it's a 40 minute drive for me. Oh, I go there, awesome. do that, drive home. <laughs> so, you know, that's the best thing. And I hope it stays even after Indiana's poor decisions. Yeah. Um, so I don't I, know. Why, why punish Gen Con? I, that's the way I look at it. I'm not mm -hmm. going to know. But yeah, I plan on running that. Probably going to run Neo Nera. Maybe some. In fact, I'm kind of converting an old. First edition AD and D module. There it is. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm converting that over to fifth edition, and I might be running that at Gen Con also, kind of depending on how my personal play test goes, and maybe on roll twenty. I'm not sure yet, but I'll definitely let you guys know. Yeah. Would definitely like to make some time for that. I'm gonna go run and grab drinks, so I'll be right back. back with a drink and left of the corpse of a chocolate rabbit <laughs> but yeah um lex i don't know if dwayne told you but we just got done talking about it 
Dwayne plans on being at Gen Con this year, so. Oh, cool. If you happen to be there, because I'm planning on going. I am not going to be there, uh, unfortunately. Rough. That's right when I'm going to be moving. Damn. The I would like to go. Yeah. Maybe next year. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did go last year, so. Mm -hmm. I've been... I didn't go last year um, because of reasons, um, but I have been... <laughs> This will be my fourth year going, so I didn't get to go last year, so I'm definitely gonna make sure I go this year. And because I know a lot of people over the internet that are gonna be going, it'll be neat to meet them IRL. Yeah, uh, which is fun. Oh. And, uh, another streamer who I watch is not a big time streamer, but he is a big time author of fantasy novels. Is gonna be there. Oh, cool. Um, Arvin Elrod, whose real name is Christopher something can't remember so this will be my first time uh at gen con or any of the larger cons really any tips or tricks for me um, um let's bring see. lots of water <laughs> after being there after why do they gouge you on water or something like make yeah sure and you'll you just have, get dehydrated yeah, because the, the food and stuff there is crazy expensive because you know their con prices slash indianapolis prices um so yeah that's a thing um, I find, and maybe it's just me, that I get a lot of headaches at conventions just because there's like a lot of going on. Maybe it's because I don't keep the blood sugar up or something and there's just so much talking and people and whatnot. Sure. So that's a thing. But um, really the first time I went, I brought too much stuff because everybody was like, you need this, that, the other thing. I don't know. It was weird. What about um, what about like signing up for events or anything like that? Is that a huge pain in the butt or? or you, what I mean, you can do everything through uh, the website. I don't really do events. Oh, I mostly okay. just do ticket stuff because either you can sign up for events, or you can just buy tickets, event tickets, and go to the walk-in events, which you know you're not guaranteeing anything. The only thing I do every year is the um, the tr uh, Hickman's breakfast. Um, Tracy, Tracy Morgan and, 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 or Tracy Hickman, whatever the words are, the yeah. name, the crazy name there, the breakfast. That's the only thing. Um, and the issue is, you know, uh, if for something, some reason, something screws up, you get a deal with their customer service and that is a big waste of time. <laughs> so that's, that's the unfortunate thing about Gen Con is they don't have the most you know, the most, the best record of making sure everything goes as planned. Yeah. It's a lot of people. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't really know what to expect. And all volunteers, a lot of people and it's run by volunteers. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. volunteering's neat. I mean, you get to go for free, um, mm. but you got to spend four hours a day being a volunteer. Uh, no. which I've considered, but, uh, you know, Lex, are you going this year? No, no, I'm, I'm moving at that time. So, Unfortunately, not this year. I'm excited to go this year. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff, gaming wise. Very few video game things. Um, if you want to buy a kilt, it's a great place to buy a kilt. Uh, it's commando kilts there. A lot of clothes stuff. Um, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not the biggest convention in the world. I mean, it's it's massive, especially. I mean, it's the biggest one of the biggest you're gonna get in Indy. Um, and, you know, people come from all over the world to it. Uh, it's the biggest gaming convention in the world. For for this type of thing, for this type of game. Yeah, gaming, and not comics or whatever. Yeah. But as far as gaming conventions, it's the biggest. It's bigger than PAX. I don't know, PAX uh, seems this like type of gaming. Oh, uh, video time. gaming, like role playing. Oh, okay. Video gaming, PAX, E3, and uh, Leipzig alone are all outrageous. Um, yeah, I plan on running and getting involved in a lot of RPGs, so hope to run some Numenera and uh, some Shadow of the Demon Lord, D&D. &D. My yeah, advice, um, um, based on my experience last year, is don't um, sign up to run too many games. Like, I had a pretty grueling GM schedule, and I ran some games for Monty Cook games, like, officially, and then I ran some where I just 
did it myself, like through the podcast. I said, hey, I'm going to run games and kind of hooked up with people on Google Plus that wanted to play. And I had a lot more fun with those than the official ones because I went and found my own place to run. And I ran at one of the, the hotels that wasn't super crowded um, where the official game, like we're, there's like eight tables crammed in this little room and it was not ideal. So you can go and just find games like that are just people doing games like all yeah. over the place. So even if you don't sign up for something official, you can always find something to do. <laughs> Ooh. And always, and like, I recommend like making like, cause you know, it's four days. Um, like one day you're going to spend, maybe say you spend the day looking at stuff, you know, because there is just a ton of stuff. Right. Um, you know, and maybe one day at looking and then, and demoing, things and then the other days you know kind of do things but there's a lot of stuff that you can only experience at gen con mm. um, so maybe run a game a day or maybe two games a day yeah and then okay. just and so take it take it a little slow yeah right. you don't get overwhelmed you don't give yourself con sickness or whatever it's called where people blow themselves con up. crud <laughs> yeah okay well thanks i for actually did not get sick from gen con mm. so yeah, beyond that, yeah, I normally got eggs. My first ever Gen Con, which was back in 2011, 2011, yeah, last year, to, to, yeah, 2011, I actually was in a fourth edition game GM by Chris Perkins. Oh, cool. Uh, nice. For Perkins, one of, the, one of the game director, designers, whatever. And that was interesting. I, I've told this story, haven't I? Mm -mm. Oh, I, for whatever reason, I, it must have been a different group. But yeah, it was interesting. Um, because you know it was neat, and I got assigned fourth edition rulebook for free. Um, uh, at the time, it was interesting, but it really wasn't fun at all, because it was a sort of you know a publicity stunt or whatever, and it was that public thing in front of the giant beholder statue they have in that um, in the ballroom where wizards the the wizards ballroom, uh, which was interesting. He was a nice enough guy, but. Eh. Definitely not one of my preferred D and D experiences. To kind of be shepherded through a promotional thing. Yeah, I could see that. Anyways, thanks for the tips. I appreciate it. Um, I had a lot of fun. And while Indianapolis is one of the safest big cities in the United States, uh, of course, don't give money to anyone on sidewalks. And keep your wallet in your front pocket if you're carrying one with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the States, so just carry a gun. Yeah, that too. I don't think you're allowed to have guns in the convention center, so. I think I could fit one underneath my helmet, and then I'll just wear the helmet. No, you're not allowed to have firearms or blades. You're violating your whatever amendment rights. I'm not in the capital city. I'm just, in I'm just, I'm just trolling <laughs> America now. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't want to, because. Even if they're, yeah, they'll say, yeah, you could have it, but we're, we reserve the right to not allow you in here. Yeah. We're not, a, you know, don't get a ticket. Um, they'll just throw you out. But during conventions, Indianapolis around the convention area is just stuffed with cops. Oh, sure. Because if something bad goes wrong, Indy will, yeah, they, they stuff that place. Because like it said in that one letter, it pulls in like $50 million dollars in the one weekend or whatever for the yeah. city. I'm bringing a bunch of money too. I just hope Indiana's off America's shit list. Cause that's what? Cause of the freedom. Religious. Yeah. Freedom Act, yeah. Good old America. Good old Indiana. America. It's the Midwest. What do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> There's a nice amber looking beer you have there tonight. Lex. It's a Pilsner. Ooh. Nice color. Yeah. Huh. It's actually more of a straw color. I don't know why it looks oranger on the camera. It looks uh, honey colored to me. Yeah. Oh, All nice. Right. Oh, wait, this is oh, I've oh, seen nice. this before. I've never Nevada. actually tried that beer, but that's like, what is it? The something's, is it Sierra Nevada or something? Yeah. Sierra Nevada. <laughs> yeah. It was on sale at Walmart. My my Pilsner is actually Sierra Nevada. Oh, it's the Nooner. 
<laughs> I'm drinking a Sam Adams uh, Sam Adams Rebel IPA. Oh, Never seen it before. One. Happened to be in the liquor store. Said nice. IPA. I bought it. Very I cool. basically will try any IPA we get here because we don't get a lot. Nice. See, if you lived in America, you'd have IPAs all over the place. Damn straight. You guys do a real good job with IPAs. <laughs> yeah, almost to a, a ridiculous amount. It's like an absurd <laughs> level, yeah. It's like, how much hops can we put in this beer? Let's see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know, man. I got this weird addiction to hops, though. I, I don't know. It is related to cannabis. The plant itself is related to cannabis. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the local pub here actually has a thing where they pour in dried hops, and then before it comes out of the tap, it the beer goes through the hops, and it gets, like, infused. So it's even wow. more. Wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty well. That, that's that's <laughs> absurd, I guess. that Now we've gotten to the point of this absurdity. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I would I say that, but I would be at that bar if i could that's pretty much my bar it's called slackers yeah they do uh they know beer they really know beer so that's pretty great slackers i remember love your it. way we're going to slackers <laughs> yeah if you ever make it to aberdeen don't <laughs> you ever if you're ever in the <laughs> just area don't. just don't if you ever make it to aberdeen just keep going <laughs> don't stop Fly but if you do run out of gas and get a flat tire go to slack <laughs> <All right. laughs> good to know <laughs> Awesome. All right. So you guys, uh, it's the 12th day and you stop for your, your, uh, first break, which is where you kind of have your, your lunch and the caravan takes off again. And it's probably only an hour or two after that. When you come up over a hill and you see ahead on the road, a, what looks to be a freight wagon um, in the road. You see the horses that were pulling it laying dead in pools of their own blood. Uh, you see a group of creatures or humanoids uh, basically circled around this wagon uh, attacking it. And it looks like there are a number of people hiding underneath the wagon that are like shooting uh, you guess crossbows at these things attacking them. And as far as the humanoids attacking them, they have uh, their skin color ranges from dark orange to reddish orange. Uh, their hair ranges in color from dark reddish brown to gray. Uh, they're about human sized. Um, they have kind of furrowed brows and big wide mouths with pointed yellow teeth. Um, they are wearing what look to be wolf furs over chain armor. Uh, they're armed with swords and shields and bows and they look pretty dangerous and it looks like these people are in, in a lot of trouble. Tyvel de Navarra, Tyvel de Navarra. What are these things over... <laughs> So you guys can roll initiative. Oh, oh let me move you over I, to the. Uh, yeah, right page. I was gonna. My other question was, what can I roll to? Like, <laughs> how do we click our two? tokens? There you go. And Dwayne, I got your new token on here. Yay! Fancy. Make sure your hit oh. points and everything are right. But... That reminds me, my token has changed. That token is old. This token is new. Uh, I can get it to hang out there. Look, no white background. It's transparent. Sweet. So I learned how to do transparencies. So did I. And it was really easy. And I yeah. feel dumb after learning how to do it. What can I roll to know what these are? Or can I roll to know what they are? Um, yeah, that would be knowledge nature. You notice I picked the token that has the horned helm yeah on it. and the silver beard okay oh. they are hobgoblins hobgoblins hobble goblins hobo goblins how many of my party are with uh, within 120 feet of me and by that i mean between mastig uthgrim thur and tyvel how many of them are within 120 feet did we used to have a wizard 
<laughs> you did. <laughs> he uh, he is strangely absent at the moment. Okay. I'm sure he's passed out in the back of the beer truck. Yeah. Yeah. He just yeah. bought passage. He didn't actually try to get hired on. Yeah, fair After that hardcore <laughs> week of like spinning, yeah. drinking, and whoring, Luthgrim just poured him into a barrel somewhere and left. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna wake up in the middle of Baldur's Gate without pants and a ringing headache. <laughs> Want to see if my transparency worked? Yeah, it did. Oh, look at that! It's really transparent. I gotta open up the monster manual, <laughs> and I still need to. I don't know. I, I don't know. Does anyone in chat that has like some kind of repository of easy access beasts um, in like a fine like Excel form or something? I would enjoy it greatly instead of having to use the monster manual and Wait, just kind of sift right. through it. Uh, luckily, all the beasts that's are pretty much in one right. spot. Miscellaneous creatures. Giant goat. Times ah. 10. Aha, that would make the difference. Let's try that again. All right, what did I roll? I rolled a 23. Okay, so you guys are 230 feet away. So that is beyond the scale of our little thing here. What? We have to use imagination? I feel... Rich. I know, I know. So, so at this point, uh, anybody with a longbow or maybe a crossbow i'm not sure you might be in range um anybody else i mean basically i think your option is double move at this point what's the range oh well i'm just going to call out to the person who's hired him okay ask uh what i'm finding her name here Adelry. should i go assist these people She says, well, they are in the middle of the road, and presumably once those beasts kill them, they'll be coming for us. Fine. See what I can do. So he uh, starts heading towards them. Okay. I will, oh shoot, I don't think I've rolled initiative. Not bad. Yeah, I just realized I didn't either. <laughs> Uh, initiative. Boom. So he has a one. And then these guys. Have a one. And then these guys. Have a one. And this guy. <laughs> well, he's not going first, that's for sure. Oh, did we lose audio again? Crap, am I going to lose everything if I exit and come back in? We shall see. Hopefully not. Lost the audio again. Let's see what the weather's looking like. Good times. Probably looking wet. And roll 20 is taking forever. Ah, oh, there we go. Season. Ah, it's hours away. So. That won't affect Can you guys us. hear me? Mm hmm. Sweet. Of course, now I lost my video. <laughs> the stream will be in part.